Continental Drift, the story of two mates riding from London to Sydney on KTM 690s, supported proudly by KTM, Rally Raid Products, Adventure Moto in Australia and Adventure Spec in England. Have a go at these babies! The idea was crazy. Ride motorbikes from Darren's home in London, England, to my home in Sydney, Australia in three months. The ride took us through Europe, Ukraine, Russia, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, China, Nepal, down the Malay Peninsula and across the deserts of Australia, all the way to my hometown, Sydney. Along the way, we met some great new friends who brought us into their lives. And we made some discoveries like Kyrgyzstan, the adventure rider's paradise. Let me tell you, it doesn't get any better than this. And we traded places with some friendly locals. Horsepower for horsepower. <laughs> then on to China, where we had the privilege of riding the mighty Himalayan mountain range where even the valley floors are at four and a half thousand metres. <laughs> yeah. Tibet is full of colour and life, and it didn't take Darren long to find his spiritual side. Into Nepal for a quick peek at Mount Everest and a taste of Asia before riding through the mighty vastness of outback Australia. Now it's time to rev those engines and hang on to your handlebars as Darren and I take you on a 22,000 kilometre London to Sydney adventure. With 14 months preparation under our belts, I arrived in London ready to ride. For the next four months, I would take on the biggest challenge of my life, sleeping in a two-man tent with Darren. But for Darren, there was a far bigger challenge. Okay, Darren, show us the damage. Crikey, mate, now you got two hands in plaster. One month before we left, he broke both his wrists in a motorcycle accident. Oh, excellent. He had more nuts and bolts in that right wrist than you'd find in any hardware store. So here we go, into London now. Go see the doctor, see what he's got to say. Let's hope it's good news. The green light from Darren's doctor was crucial if we were to ride. Meanwhile, the preparation of the KTM 690s was in full swing. The KTM 690 is a dirt-oriented dual sports bike. It has great suspension and power and is capable of taking you anywhere. But for the longer miles, it does need some modification. And we turn to John Mitchinson of Rally Raid Products to prepare the bikes for this London to Sydney adventure. The bikes were fitted with three additional fuel tanks and that extended our range to about 500 k's plus. There were minor frame modifications, the, the fitting of a luggage rack and increasing the strength of the These rear shock spring the ensured the bikes were ready to take on any adventure. But there was one more necessary modification that could literally save our asses on a 20,000 kilometre ride. How you doing, Dave? This is my special beaver bum saver, I'm going to call it. Hopefully this is going to stop us getting our monkey butt. I'm hoping. Darren's test results for his arm were mixed. He could ride, but if it got too painful, he would have to stop. But there were deadlines for this trip, and stopping simply wasn't an option. And so we turned to plan B, Steve. It's great to be on the team. I didn't realise at the time that I'd entered a legal contract that meant that I was uh, forced to go all the way to Russia whether I liked it or not. So it's to Russia with love. At short notice, Steve kindly volunteered to support us by driving a minivan for the first few weeks of the trip. So, um, if Darren's wrist got too sore, he could put the bike in the van and have a rest. But things were on target. Bikes delivered, soft luggage fitted, and just one more milestone to go. Darren, would he be able to ride? Well, this is the day today. First time back on the bike since the accident. 
I don't really know what to expect. Um, I feel I can do it, but I just don't know, so I'll try. So here goes. <laughs> well, you always knew Darren was going to give it a go. And so, with the love and good wishes from friends and family, we headed to Sydney. But not before a wonderful ride out from the KTM Centre at Hemel Hempstead. He's our guide. He's ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Onto the tunnel train heading for France. Our ambitious plan was to be at the Polish border in seven days. That would mean traversing a country a day, and Darren's wrist simply wasn't up for that. The next morning, it was clear Darren was in a bit of pain, and plan B would be swung into action. Yeah. Late in the day, and my wrist was very sore and painful, so I um, pretty decided too late. But anyway, I'm going to start the day off in the van this morning. We blasted down the freeways of France and the autobahns of Germany, with our sights set on meeting up with our friends in Matagoffen, Austria. But those freeways are pretty monotonous, so I took to practicing some ballet along the way. Gentlemen, Morning. we're in Austria. Nearly there. Oh, nearly there, mate. It was great to be back in Austria, and a quick visit to the KTM factory in Matagoffen before we caught up with Gottfried of KTM, who had some surprises for us. We're finally in Matagoffen and, and Gottfried has been such a support for us to get this project underway and he's uh, brought home some parts. Thank you so much, Gottfried. Welcome. Thank you, thank you. But Gottfried had one more surprise for us. Dinner with Herbert Pulse. Herbert was a distinguished frame designer for KTM for nearly three decades. He was also a racer and had represented Austria in the international six-day trial. It was a great honour to have Herbert cast his eyes over our bikes and give us some tips. I was in the r and I designed things, I made them and I tested them. And so I went in the races too, in two races, in Austria and then I went international and six days and this kind of thing. We've got heavy duty tubes in the so when Herbert gave us some advice, we listened. But it was great to see he was impressed with our bikes. Ninety-six uh, star car, you know, I was there as a mechanic, yeah. and I must say, this bike is better for sure. It was great to get Herbert's endorsement of our bike preparation, and in the morning we refocused on our next task: getting to the Polish-Ukraine border in four days. Our first goal of seven countries in seven days was almost complete. Our next important stop was Prestishev in the Czech Republic to meet up with my in-laws who own a small pub in the town. A quick hello and catch up before a refuel of ham and eggs and some great Czech beer. And then we were back on the road. Schemsel holds a tragic history. In June 1941, the Germans launched their invasion of Russia from here. Over four million soldiers invaded along a 3,000 kilometre front. It was the largest invasion in the history of warfare, and we were at the Russian front. In fact, the Russian front was just outside the door of our hotel and defined by the River Seine. Entering the Ukraine was our first real border crossing and it would be the last time we would see Steve as there was some paperwork issue that prevented him and the van entering the country. The van we thought we had uh, through to Kiev as a turn round at the Ukraine border. The reason being was that we didn't have the original V5 with the rental. So now we're on our own. Uh, there was a few lessons learnt during that little phase and I'll let Dave tell you all about that. Always keep your registration papers with your passport. Final thing is, if you're given any paperwork, keep the bloody paperwork. 
as you can see from the sweat, I wasn't getting out of, I wasn't getting in the Ukraine there for a minute until I found this tiny little slip of paper with a stamp on it. We headed east for three weeks on the mighty Starns, an open flat grassland that stretches for thousands of kilometres all the way to Mongolia. It was driving us mad and we explored seating positions for the long grind. Well, I'd love to tell you the road to Kiev was really hard, but it's not. It's a magnificent four-lane freeway, billiard table top smooth, straight as an arrow and boring as batshit. But there were two things that kept us on our toes. Firstly, the consequences of eating the food, such as herring under fur coat, and police radar speed traps, hundreds of them. We learnt that policing was ferocious but fair, provided you stuck to the 50 kilometre speed limit in towns. And as for the food, well, the consequences were just ferocious, much to the amusement of my riding companion. When your uh, when your companion's got bad shit. A little worse for wear, I hopped back on my bike, only to be stopped by the police. I got stopped at this roadblock, and uh, as you know, I had the runs back about a couple of kilometres back, and I got them again. But it was all good. We were <laughs> we were doing the right thing, and they've been very helpful. I've been very good. During the course of the Second World War, the Russian front moved east, and we too were heading in that direction. For the next two weeks, a day didn't go past when we weren't reminded of this tragic and brutal history. Down a forest trail, we stumbled across the remnants of a prisoner of war camp. There are three layers of wire. The first one you can see in the distance uh, is completely electrified and then the next is barbed wire and then you finish up with this final layer of barbed wire. There is a grave site or some form of monument, we just can't get to it because of the wire. And I've worked out from this lady who was picking berries uh, just in the forest here um, that it is some form of prison camp. Bye bye! Just get off that freeway and history is everywhere. Tragic history but history nevertheless. In just under 14 days, we had ridden nearly 4,000 kilometres, covered seven countries, and would shortly be entering Russia. But the further east we headed, the challenges of language became greater. And sometimes you thought you were communicating, but you just didn't know. Uh, Australia, Australia, kangaroo. Uh -huh, yeah, nice ducks. Water? Yeah, no, we could. Ah, у вас есть водичка? Yeah. Понятно. Вы боитесь, да? Goodbye. Goodbye. And we left the Ukraine with fond hearts for this warm and friendly people. Our sights were now set on Volgograd, Russia. Jesus, it is Volgograd! 